Hello, friends. Uncle Marv here with another episode of the IT Business Podcast. We are doing another special episode. This is part two of our Synology series. I have with me once again, Douglas Ricketts from Synology. Douglas, how are you? Howdy, Marvin. Good to be here. Glad to be uh, good to be back and chatting with you. All right. So last time we were on, for the listeners that may be listening to the shows out of order, we started with an introduction to Synology in terms of the business case for Synology. I spoke about my reluctance to get on board years ago, and we talked about all of the things now that Synology can do for the the business, including replace servers with directory services and DHCP and we mentioned a few things, so we're going to go on to part two now. Is there anything that you want to um, go back and make sure that we, you know, put a pin in uh, our first episode? Yeah, well, I, you know, I, I think uh, one thing I, I hadn't mentioned too much about, I, we talked about backup appliance. I didn't really bring up the file server uh, application of it all that much, and we can certainly dive into that uh, later or, or, you know, whenever we really like. But why don't we go ahead and do it now? Because sure. that, I mean, that falls right into the fact that we had talked about Synology. My first impression was, oh, it's a backup appliance and it's a small storage appliance for home users and stuff. But being able to bring a Synology box into a business environment and utilize file services from a true network perspective, that's one of the things that sold me. I could do user permissions as opposed to just giving access to everybody. So let's go ahead and start Mm -hmm. there with uh, our part two, file services. So I would kind of just dive into a a conversation I had just yesterday uh, at Synology. We we often actually have little reviews in a room between our entire team where we go over case studies. We go over stuff that we have worked on and deployed and architected. And we discuss between amongst each other why we decided to architect those solutions and what what were the implications for the end users and the MSPs that we're working with. So uh, an MSP had, worked, had reached out to us um, a, a few months back and they have, were discussing a relatively large deployment that involves storage for virtualization. Mm. They had two competitor brands. Uh, I'm not going to mention the brand names, but... Um, they were quoting them around $160,000. So for some, that may be eye-popping. For others, it might not be very bad. For me, that's pretty eye-popping. So we were actually able to get them down, not to the $100,000 range, but we got them down to $63,000 for storage for virtualization. Now, why that, while that may seem like a lot uh, of upfront cost for this particular deployment, it was significant. It was a significant amount of reduction in the cost because they were willing to pay that $160,000 that was being quoted. The the option for them to use our units as storage for virtualization on pretty high-end virtual machines with with hypervisors that required high IOPS was something astronomical to them. And they didn't have reoccurring fees for that. They didn't have to pay for the solution to be utilized um, as, as, as a file server, a storage for virtualization, I should say. So that greatly reduced their, uh, their dependency on even solutions that cost money per month on the two other solutions that, that were being quoted. Uh, I should say the two other pieces of hardware that were being quoted, uh, like Veeam or other, or other solution sets out there that they'd have to pay monthly for. None of that was, was an issue with our deployment. It was a one-time cost and it was good to go. Now, in addition to that, we also did backup for those, for their hypervisor, their primary server. Um, so, you know, I think that sort of scratches the surface of sort of the difference we can make in those environments. We can provide the high IOPS, but we're, we don't have those costs anywhere near um, what, what other brands have. Well, funny you should mention that because I have a customer that we are looking at something quite similar where they have multiple terminal servers, physical boxes for their external offices, and they want to migrate to a terminal server farm. And they've got older boxes, so they have to get new hardware. So I'm looking at Synology as a possibility of how can I, you know, turn these RDS servers 
into virtual machines that I can use mm-hmm. on a Synology NAS. How can we pull storage? And my initial look at the cost were, you know, I'm an HP shop. I'm not going to, you know, hide that. But my HP solutions versus the Synology solution, it's literally half. And when you're talking, as you said, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, saving a hundred grand sounds nice to a business owner. It does. And the the other thing is, is that you're not only saving that, that money in the deployment, you're also setting up a strategy to be able to monetize on the license-free solutions that you're using. And that means that while you're managing that NAS, you have the capability to actually utilize those solution sets within the NAS. And because you're managing it, you can charge a certain amount per month. I mean, obviously it it takes you time to manage that solution. Um, So not having those reoccurring fees in the back end is huge. Well, yeah, you still have to do everything, even if you're doing it just as a, a file server. You know, the fact that you can track file changes, you know, <laughs> you still got to do that. You've got to do the backups for it. You still got to monitor the backups. So all of that can still be monetized. But just hearing the fact that I can save you a hundred grand on the front end. It's huge. You know, because most of them know if you're a managed service provider, most of your clients know that they're still going to get charged for your services. So you're not worried about losing that money because they're putting mm. out, you know, so much for the hardware. They're not going to beat you down. You know, what well, can you save us money here if we're going to spend all this money? That that uh, changes the conversation. Sure. Yeah, it absolutely does. Now, if we look specifically at something like File Station, letting, you know, techs like us know all of the things that they can do so that we can then turn around and let our customers know you can do a lot of the same things with file station as mm-hmm. you can with a true windows file server in terms of user permissions, uh, folder structure, encryption. I mean, there's a lot that's in there. Yeah, we absolutely, we talked a little bit about encryption uh, earlier. I mean, for a HIPAA compliant environment that, that like we work in end to end encryption and encryption at rest is mandatory. It's not, there's not a question of, whether or not we should do it, we need it. And being able to do that directly through file station on SMB or NFS shares is essential. And so, and also setting that up is as simple as a few clicks, really. This is something that is very quick and easy to set up um, via an SMB or NFS share. And in addition to that, we also have Synology Drive. So for folks that aren't dealing with sort of like the encrypted type HIPAA compliant solutions, Synology Drive is pretty much your own personal cloud. And that is something that you can create directly on a NAS. It's a a lot like a lot of the other cloud solutions out there. You basically just have shares. All of those shares are routed directly through Synology. Uh, I should say through your Synology box. Um, You know, the Synology handles all the IP forwarding, things like that. Uh, so that, that your computer can constantly be connected to that share, no matter where you are in the world, as long as you have an internet connection. And again, no extra fees for that. So if you're looking at another solution, you know, and I'm going to throw out names. I know you don't like to throw out names, but if you're looking okay. for <laughs> like, you're a, <laughs> like, a, like a Dropbox or one of those other types of services, that's going to cost users money. You can deploy this in a, you know, I'm not going to say a huge environment, but, you know, a small network that, you know, the owner needs access to files, they can have access. And that's exactly where we see that deployment uh, being effective. But I, I mean, in terms of file server solutions in general, uh, the opportunities within the NAS are virtually instant or uh, vir- virtually endless. Uh, I mean, there's just so many different options out there. It's so flexible. Uh, I, I would say, I would venture to say it's probably one of the most flexible solutions in the market and it's all license free. All right. So we've kind of focused on the on-prem stuff and you, you started to go in that direction with the Synology drive, having access from the cloud. Mm-hmm. Synology has rolled out a cloud based solution for a ton of stuff rolled up into, you call it the C2, right? Mm-hmm. So tell us all the things, you know, that can be done now with the C2. So C2 started as a repository, uh, which is C2 storage. Now, C2 storage allows you to back up your NAS 
using a solution on the NAS called Hyper Backup, which does global dedupe. Uh, there's also compression. So optionally, you can have compression in the cloud. There's end-to-end -end encryption and encryption at rest for any of your high compliance uh, solutions. Although I always recommend 2FA and encryption regardless uh, of whether you need the compliance or not. It's great. It's a great have if it doesn't cost anything extra. Um, so that, that the in, in turn with C2 storage will allow you to um, actually pull that down from C2 and restore your NAS too, should you ever need to. Mm. You can actually access individual files on C2 storage as well. We then branched into C2 Backup. Uh, so C2 Backup was a pretty revolutionary solution for Synology in that it allowed you to back up your endpoint without a NAS. So you can you know, basically install a client on your Windows machine. Um, there's other machines coming out. I think we're having a release, I want to say this week, a feature release um, that, that we may be able to talk about a little bit regarding that. Um, and some other some other uh, solutions, but basically it was revolutionary because it allowed us to back up that endpoint directly to the cloud without a NAS. And that was something that Synology had almost considered taboo at times, right? But now it's like, we need that. That makes sense because end users want that, right? They want that flexibility. Well, not only end users, but us as managed service providers want that right. to, you know, or smaller environments where we may not get to put a NAS in, you know, an actual box, but to be able to provide them with a solution that can compete with all, <laughs> of, all of the other cloud-based solutions um, and, and stay within the same family. I think that's <laughs> kind of where it is now that, you know, it's an all-inclusive thing. You can do the box, you can do the cloud, you can do the backup, as well as some of the other things in C2. Yeah, absolutely. And then we're also integrating that into a console for MSPs. So all of those solutions are going to be kind of rolled into that console easily managed by an MSP. So if you have multiple C2 deployments, you can manage those directly through the MSP console. So then there's also identity. We, talk, we talked about that briefly uh, when I went off on a tangent earlier, but um, that's basically an AD, an active directory in the cloud that allows you to authenticate. It allows you to grant policies um, and permissions as needed across your entire network. Great for an SMB that's looking to save some money on, uh, on an AD deployment. Um, we also have uh, a C2 password. So password management, I can't tell you, and Marvin, you're gonna cringe when I say that, I can't tell you how many MSPs or IT specialists I've run into that don't have password management systems. And it, it happens every now and then. I'm sure you do. <laughs> I, I'm sure most of your folk. I actually have two. Um, <laughs> but but you're right. A lot of people yeah. don't. I know some that, and, and a lot of times they'll flop back and forth because they're always looking to save money. And that's another thing. Some of these password management, they get costly. <laughs> they can definitely be costly. And so if C2 password is not one of your two and you're using C2 right now, you've got C2 password. So now you've got three, uh, if that's the case. Okay. If, you, if you're looking to, like, looking to use that one, I know you've been using C2 and a little bit on the back end, um, but yeah, that's an option for you as well. Yep, I uh, did not know I had the C2 as part of it. So what he was referring to, folks, is uh, I do Synology backup. I have, so I'm using Hyper Backup, but I'm also using a couple of other products, but all of the products have you know, bring your own storage. Now I kind of, I'm not going to fib. So I started using Wasabi <laughs> when, That's I started, okay. when I started doing this, <laughs> but then I found that you guys had the C2 storage that I could use that as a storage point. And the price really isn't that different, but I tell you what was different. My initial backup for a client was taking so long with Wasabi that that's what decided, let me take a, a look at C2 and half the time. Yeah. I mean, that, and that's exactly what, what the, what comes up pretty, pretty consistently. I will say from a pricing perspective, I think the two solutions without mentioning a name are pretty, pretty similar, right? It, 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 it certain times, but there are differences on the back end uh, in the management section and whatnot. And then also sort of the added benefits were, were, were giving to C2 that, that, 
sort of bridge the gap. And honestly, uh, cloud solutions out there, I've talked to a few of the industry leaders from many different um, many different segments, Wasabi included, right? I've, I've spoken with folks from them too. Um, and I will say that uh, for years, they have been supportive and they have been uh, increasingly involved in, in Synology's deployments because cloud solutions need on-premise solutions. They don't always they don't always say it directly to their their end users, right, or their MSPs, but they do need on-premise solutions to be viable because when they do a deployment, some end users want that, some MSPs want that. Well, and here's the thing: I've got a client that just got it's a not-for-profit that just received a grant to beef up their network and provide not just backup but redundancy, resiliency. So one of those things is trying to figure out a way to get them to do a hybrid cloud so that they have their on-prem, but down here in Florida, we have hurricanes, we have power outages, we have thunderstorms that are just not your average, you know, 30 mile an hour winds. We, we can have a thunderstorm mimic a hurricane. Sure. So they need to have this solution to where if something happens at their office, do they still have access to their files? So as So I've looked at the hybrid cloud through Synology, and it seems as though we can do all of that through this C2. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. So, Marvin, thanks for bringing that up. Hybrid cloud is a solution right now that we are rapidly growing. And what hybrid cloud entails is a C2 storage backend and a NAS upfront. So frequently access data, uh, any of your data that you're pulling from almost daily, you can cache that on premise, and by the way, this is select. This is ban- this. This can be a manual or an automatic process. So you can select what data you want to keep on prem, cached on your NAS. Then there's other data that's actually held up in C2 storage, but it's visible on the NAS as if it was available right then and there. So that means you have access to that frequently access. By the way, you can do this with an SMB share. So this can be tied into your your you know your operating system, uh, whatever you're using as an SMB share and your your data can all be stored in the cloud, but but your frequently frequently accessed data can be cached. So it's I mean it's a very helpful, flexible solution. And again, there's no extra cost to utilize that if you're using C2. Sweet. I am definitely going to be uh, chatting with you guys a little bit more on that. Yeah. So all right. So Doug, here we are, episode two in the Synology series here. Uh, I want to save a little bit of time and let people know that these first couple of episodes are audio only, but you and I are in discussion to actually do a live show so that we can not only, you know, regurgitate this stuff that we're talking about now, but be able to show kind of like a quick demo as to how some of these things work. We haven't come up with the time yet, but I want to let people know that, you know, keep going to the website, coming back to the show notes and listening to the IT Business Podcast, where I will make those announcements, and that will be happening here real soon. All right? Sounds so, great, Marvin. All right, Doug, so did we touch on everything in C2? Which I don't think we did, but... <laughs> it's hard. It's it's hard, I think, to touch on everything. I would say the top-end stuff we've probably hit. Um, I, I would say, you know, in general, um, you know, we're looking at about six ninety nine per terabyte, uh, per month, we also have yearly plans uh, for MSPs exclusively. We actually have two-year plans um, too. So you, you know the flexibility is there. And when you're looking to deploy, don't be don't be shy about reaching out to us uh, about C2. We're here to help you a monetize the solution and b deploy it effectively in whatever order you you look to. I mean, as I, I'm, I'm a business owner myself, I have a, um, a landscaping company, so I understand sort of that side of things, but we're here to help. All right. So we are going to have contact information and links in the show notes. Be sure to check those out. And we're going to come back with uh, another episode here real soon. And we'll talk about all the things you mentioned, Doug, that makes Synology MSP friendly. So, Thank you, sir. We will do that real soon. Thank you, folks, for tuning in. And we'll be back real soon with another episode. And on behalf of my good friend here, Doug, thank you for listening. And until next time, holla.